Welcome to this Let's Play of Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2, the Sith Lords. Um, that's us in the tank there. Um, as I mentioned before, this is going to be a canonical light side playthrough with a female exile. And uh, we'll see what, how it goes. And um, apparently we're having issues. The first area here, Paragus, has some very sort of survival horror type feeling to it. Um, not in the, the sense that, you know, there are evil and powerful enemies just waiting to smash you, but it's very sort of more exploration rather than combat. This game has a lot of non-combat sequences. It also has a lot of dialogue, frankly. The, the amount of voice acting in this game is quite impressive, uh, even to the point where I'm going to have entire episodes of this Let's Play which will be nothing but dialogue. I'll try to mark those in case people are sort of looking more for a walkthrough uh, than a just sort of play of the game. But uh, there's going to be some interesting things for me in this playthrough because this is the first time I've been played the game with the Restoration Project intact. Uh, so we'll see how that works. Hopefully it's a, it's a beta version still, so we'll see how it, uh, how it goes. Now, this game really takes a long time to get new things. Um, it'll probably be several episodes before we get close, and even though you start as a Jedi in this game, uh, you don't get a light a power for level 1, but you do get them as starting at level 2, it will probably be episode 40 or 50 before we hit a lightsaber. Uh, this is a long game, uh, more, and this Let's Play will be long because there's a lot of dialogue I'm not going to skip. So, let's see what this medical computer has to say. I'm not actually going to play these medical logs. More or less, they indicate that you were found on the ship and they, you, know, you were injured and there was someone else on the ship who was dead and they're in the morgue. And we can look at the patient life signs. Looks like the uh, other five, other four patients in the five cold tanks are dead. Uh, so, no way to deal with that. Now, I don't actually have any skill in treat injury, but you can still uh, use the skill even if you don't have it. Um, I have enough wisdom, I guess. But I don't have a computer spike, so I can't actually attempt to track the treatment requests. Um, the unlocked medical storage room requires no spikes, so we'll just use that. We'll unlock the door to the morgue. Now, to the right here is this lab station, um, which you can use to make items. I'm not actually going to do the, anything with it at this point. I don't have any innate treat injury skill, which means I can't really make very much. Um, I might be able to make basic med packs, but there are a couple of them lying around, and really you don't need that much. That uh, container there had chemicals. Uh, chemicals are the raw material for making things off of lab stations. Everything uses chemicals if it's a lab station item, which includes implants, explosives, and medicines. Pretty much everything else is made with components, and those things work about the same way. Um, and here we are on the morgue, and hey, dead bodies! You know what we do with dead bodies in RPGs? We loot them! And, um, I guess she's not dead. Find what you're looking for amongst the dead? Um, yeah, we could mention we thought she was dead. Close to death. Yes, closer than I'd like. You have the smell of the Kolto tank about you. How do you feel? Um... Kolto tanks, if you're not familiar with sort of Star Wars lore, are healing devices. And, um... We heard that Awaken, and was that her? Yes, I had hoped as much. I slept here too long and could not awaken. It may be I reached out unconsciously, and your mind must have been a willing one. Or perhaps you have been trained for such things. Okay. You can touch minds and feign death. Those are unusual abilities. I am Kreia, and I am your rescuer, as you are mine. Tell me, do you recall what happened? Okay, so we me mentioned that we were on the Harbinger, a Republic ship. Your ship was attacked. You were the only survivor. A result of your Jedi training, no doubt. And uh, you can say that you're no longer a member of the Jedi Order. This game refers to you in general as the Exile. Uh, and we'll get into why later. Your stance, your walk, tells me you are a Jedi. Your walk is heavy. You carry something that weighs you down. 
And we can mention the Jedi Order and have a troubled history. So it would seem. Keep your past and let us focus on the now. Okay. I do not know. I was removed from the events of the world as I slept. A survey of the surroundings may provide the answers we seek. The ship we arrived in, the Ebon Hawk, must still be in this place. We should recover it and leave. Okay. Let's get out of here. We were attacked once, and I fear our attackers will not give up the hunt so easily. Without transport, weapons, and information, they will find us easy prey indeed. Some clothes would be nice too, but yeah. Um, now, persuade and awareness, the reason you have to have them on your main character is that they come up as conversations options. And if you don't have the skill, you don't see the conversation option. We'll use awareness. Even as I slept, I felt much unrest here. I saw strange visions, minds colored with fear. Now, everything here feels terribly silent. A last word of caution. I would find out as much as you can about this place quickly. I fear we will need to depart as suddenly as we arrived. Okay. Um... You may wish to extend your search to some clothes, if only for proper first impressions. Okay. And we can ask her about the, mi the dead miners in the med bay. I do not know. Why did they spare you? And you can point out that they did... This treatment request indicates that they were all killed by overdose of sedatives, and uh, same dose was given to you. Indeed. A Jedi trance could protect one from such poisons. In fact, the sedatives may have been intended to keep you unconscious for some time. It would prove lethal to those untrained in such techniques, however. Most curious. Okay. And, um... Is she a Jedi? I don't know. She seems to know a lot about Jedi. And so do you. Perhaps we could discuss it at length later on. Now we have other concerns, among them finding our new enemy. Okay, and we can say I'll return soon to make sure you're all right I for some to light side points. This place. Here I will remain and attempt to center myself. Yeah, well, you wouldn't want to be useful, would you? Anyway, um. I'm going to try to get light side points where I can. There are more than enough light side points in this game that if you wanted to sort of dither around on uh, getting light side points, you would don't have to worry about it. To avoid this episode being entirely dialogue, as I mentioned, that'll happen, we're going to have to get into the action. Now, this plasma torch, I don't, why the dead guy had a plasma torch on him in the morgue? Yeah, I don't know. But plasma torch is essentially a very effective tool against inanimate objects. Um, specifically, a, uh, it's good against doors and things. It's a lockpick, as far as I'm concerned. And since I don't have the lockpicking skill, it's the only way I'm going to get through locks. The way this game is set up, if you break things, uh, containers, you will usually break one or more of the items in them. Uh, I'm just going to have to deal with that, because I don't have the skill to deal with it. But here we are in our first combat. I picked up this vibro cutter, which is a sword, uh, off of a uh, dead body lying out there. And uh, so we can go up against these mining droids. Now, I have an 8 strength. I actually have a penalty to hit um, from strength. And I'm level 1. Everybody in this game has a high base attack bonus under D20 rules, which is the, the rule set this game uses. Uh, same as, you know, all the AD&D games. And so I have a sort of zero attack bonus, and they have like a 10 AC. But you'll notice that I'm not missing very often. And the reason for that is that I'm using a melee weapon against an enemy who's equipped with a ranged weapon, which gives you plus six to hit. It's uh, quite effective, actually. Uh, and I'm going to rely on that quite a bit, that bonus quite a bit for this first area, because really there's no other way for me to do it. Um, the energy, you know, the guns that are available at this point are garbage. So, uh, we're going to have to pick another lock here. And, you know, pick up some ion grenades. I'm actually going to avoid using grenades, except in just like one or two fights. For the most part, they don't do very much damage, uh, and they're sort of unreliable. Uh, but, you know, they're there. Uh, this security desk has some more information and some logs we're going to watch, but we'll do that in the next episode.